Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, and this is taken from the nose. So the tumor actually extends from here to here. And on the right side, we have some normal skin, similarly on the left side. So let's quickly orientate ourselves to the normal areas first. Here is the epidermis on the surface, which is composed of stratified squamous epithelium with some keratinization on the surface without any nuclei here. And then below this, we have the dermis, which is mostly pink because it is composed of collagen. And this contains the adnexal structures such as the pilosebaceous units and some of the sweat glands. And then moving down, we have the subcutis, which is composed of adipose tissue. There is also some skeletal muscle here, and this is not part of the skin. Let's move over to the area of the tumor. We can see that there are many islands of infiltrative squamous cells that come into the dermis and move downwards and invade into the dermis. Let's take a closer look. Here we can see some irregular islands or nests of malignant squamous cells. The nuclei are quite irregular. They have prominent nucleoli, but they also have quite abundant cytoplasm. Hence the NC ratios or nuclear cytoplasmic ratios are still quite low. Here is another island of malignant cells. This is not to be confused with the benign pilosebaceous units that we see here. We can see the sebaceous glands as part of this normal and nexal structure, whereas this is tumor. You also notice that there are some areas where you see these whorls of densely orangeophilic material. These are keratin pearls, and these are characteristically seen in keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. In general, the more keratin pearls we see, the more well differentiated the tumor is, but we also have to take into account the degree of nuclear atypia. So looking at some of these nests of tumor cells, we can see that there is quite significant nuclear enlargement and pleomorphism. We can also see that the tumor extends right into the deep dermis and it doesn't infiltrate into the subcutis in this particular section. Here we can also appreciate that the stroma around these nests or islands of infiltrating squamous cells appears to be quite cellular and quite disturbed. There are more inflammatory cells and also spindled myofibroblasts in the stroma and this is evidence of stromal desmoplasia. Desmoplasia is often seen accompanying invasive epithelial tumors. Hence, in summary, this is a keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma, which is characterized by sheets of infiltrative squamous cells invading into the dermis, as well as many readily identifiable keratin pearls. Thank you.